Welcome, I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. From our BizVision studios in the UK, you're watching the BVTV Network. A study of 2,000 employees of larger companies released in the UK this week by insurance giant Aviva found that 40% of them 47%, sorry, 47% of employees were less career focused because of the pandemic. Now, around two in five said they could never switch off from work, and 40% are concerned about work related burnout. Worrying figures for companies. And so I thought, let's pay a visit to a recent guest to discuss it all. From leading executive search firm O'Connell Group and author of Ignite Your Career, let's say welcome back to Chris Holmes. Hello, Malcolm. How are you? Oh, it's lovely to talk to you again. Now, um, last time we were in Chicago, or Chicago, yes. well, what do they call it? And, <laughs> and, and now today we're in St. Louis or St. Louis, which is it? You can call it either one. I am in St. Louis today. Absolutely. All right. With, well, with the Gateway Arch. All right. Well, for, for, for those of us, our, peop- our viewers and listeners who have got um, that sort of uh, knowledge, you know, it, it's sort of meet me in St. Louis. That's it. Yes. Yeah. You got it. I got it. Okay. Excellent. Chris, the study I've just mentioned must mm. be alarming news for big companies and their growth and their succession planning. But let's focus our chat today on the employees whose ignition seems not to be firing well at the moment. Viewers and listeners, in this BBTV show, I'll be talking to Chris in three parts. In part one, I want to talk to her about change and attitude. In part two, I'll ask her what preparation a candidate for a job should make. And in part three, I want to ask her how she stops people from lowering their aspirations. But first, Chris, oh, it's it's a happy anniversary, I believe, today about your book. Yes. Tell us about your book, Ignite Your Career. What's it about and why you wrote it? Absolutely. Well, I will tell you first, I wrote it because I've been doing executive recruiting for over 25 years, Malcolm. And in that, I take my candidates through everything from career counseling, helping them figure out where they want to go and how to get there and all the pieces. And I realized I can only talk to so many people in a day. And on top of that, I went and present to a lot of different colleges and realized the students were hungry for the information. So that gave me the motivation to think, I think I want to write a book. And what the book is, is it's kind of a career Bible. And it's written in a way that's very relatable, readable, but actionable so that people can, the upfront part is all the strategic parts. It's helping you figure out your strengths, the phases of the career, why culture is important and why it's always so critical to think long-term. And then once you know where you want to go, the back half is all the tactical pieces, Mm. how you get there. And so people who have read it everywhere from chief marketing officers down to people coming out of colleges have said that it is a goldmine of information. So that is why I wrote it and what it's all about. Yeah, I, I think it's a brilliant book. I really do. Now, and just before we move on to the questions, and, and yes. it is the first anniversary today, actually today. Today. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 in, I'm honoured. Um, I'll, I'll have a glass of wine for you later. Um, oh, thank you. But, but I, I, I love the story because you learned, launched, obviously, during COVID time. And if viewers, I'm sorry, listeners, but it has to be for viewers here, just look behind Chris, you'll yes. see a rather um, attractive uh, big board that her husband had be- had done for her. Tell us a story. Go on, tell us a story. So um, we launched during COVID. That was obviously not the intention, but world happened and you can only control so much. My husband's very creative. And so he told me he was doing a surprise for me. So he reached out to our friends and said, we're doing a launch party, but obviously we couldn't see anybody in person. So he had all our friends drive by and I signed the book and he held up the sign and people signed their notes on the sign that you see behind you. And we gave him the book, which was really wonderful. So I got to see all my friends. I couldn't obviously hug them because yeah. nobody had been vaccinated at that point, but they got to celebrate the book and me and it was heartwarming and yeah. kudos to my husband, Jim. 
Yeah, I, I think apart from top of that, then apart from your husband creative, he's also quite canny, as we would say over here, because yes. you didn't waste all the money on the party, did you? No, <laughs> we did not. I absolutely. Like it. I but like he it. did, you know what? He did, all three of our kids came in for it, which shocked the heck out of me when my one of my kids flew in from Seattle for the day. Uh, which was really wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, great. Well, uh, and and the book is doing so well and so deservedly. It's a great book. Chris, let's start with part one. Many employees are having to change in career at the moment, often through disgruntlement or a lack of engagement. But I guess the thing they need to change first themselves is attitude. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. and, and where else is change needed if they are to be successful in career growth? So, Malcolm, talking to candidates that I deal with every day um, and, and seeing what you've said, the studies that are out there, I think this last year and a half has had people really reassess what's important to them, you know, with people working from home and people losing people dear to them. And as you said, some people working way too much because they couldn't get away from it. It's really forced people to step back and say, what are my priorities? You know, you've had a lot of alone time during this time. And so I think it's given people really a gift, what I'll call a silver lining, to really dig deep and figure out what's important. Mm -hmm. It used to be climbing the corporate ladder. It used to be making a lot of money. And now it's maybe not. Maybe it's, I want to get closer to family. Or, you know, being closer to nature, I've realized being able to go to the bars and restaurants uh, doesn't cut it anymore. It doesn't fulfill me. So I think people knowing what their priorities are and being able to have those on a piece of paper and, and know that that's their North Star. Okay, these are the things, but then also know work-wise, this is what's important. You know, these, this is the type company. I want a company that's ethical, I want a company that aligns with my goals. But again, as my book says, I think it's so important to know your strengths and to find roles where your strengths set you up for success. So if you know the personal side and then you know yourself and your strengths and you find roles where you're set up for success, where you can knock the ball out of the park, that's where you're going to win and feel motivated and satisfied all in one. Yeah, I guess that's where the ignition part comes. It's not improveyourcareerbook.com, is it? It's ignite your career. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and it's that spark, though, that causes the ignition. Where do they get it from? I've been mean, obviously your book, but where do they get it from internally? Well, and that's a great question. I think I think you you said it right there. It's internally. It's like nobody else can light mm. that spark for them. Mm. They've got to figure out what's important to them. They've got to figure out, you know, it is giving back and making a difference in the world. What's going to make me happy? is going to, corp, you know, moving up the corporate ladder and proving to my family that I could be successful. What's going to matter? It, you know, what is it that's going to make me happy and satisfied? And every single person has to answer that for themselves. And that's only going to come through self-reflection. And, and Malcolm, each person has to do that themselves and find their spark. And sometimes, you need to give yourself a break and give yourself time off before you can do that. Especially a lot of people I think are suffering still from the mm -hmm. loneliness and, and you know the somewhat of depression that came with COVID. Everybody had, even though, even though many people got through it okay, there were still so many ups and downs and dif discomforts that a lot of people are still come, trying to come out of that. Um, and people need to recognize that it's not all smooth sailing. No, no, no. It's like it's, you said, life. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's continuing as well, isn't it? The uncertainty uh, yes. and the doubt. Uh, the one thing that we are finding in the UK here, and I'm sure it's reflecting all the way, is the anxiety that people have about going back to work. Uh, yes. They're anxious about, should I be talking to my employees? Um, should I, uh, my team, my, my friends and everything, should I be even cuddling them or giving them a hug or whatever may be there because COVID still hasn't gone. So the anxiety must 
must must hold back on people's aspirations, surely. And, and I think that's very fair. We have like we have a spectrum. We have a couple of our clients who are saying everybody's back in the office five days a week. And and we are having a tough time recruiting for those clients because a lot of people have said, you know, I found that I kind of like working from home. I don't Mm. need to do it every day, but that flexibility is really important. And I think I proved that I can be really successful. So in my field, in marketing and market research, we're finding the majority of our clients are doing the hybrid. So two or three days in the office, but even so you know, it is taking people a while to get acclimated. And even in my office, we're back in the office three days a week. And at first people were not happy, kind of kicking and screaming. And now they're back and I think they're fine. They realize, oh, I did miss this. I miss the camaraderie. I miss the sharing. I miss the support. I miss the learning, but I didn't miss the commute. I didn't miss the being able to throw the laundry in or get dinner ready or walk the dog. So, you know, there's a balance there, but there is discomfort, especially with the Delta variant out there. Mm. And nobody knows if the vaccines are going to keep us safe. You know, there is discomfort and uncertainty. Yeah, Yeah. I agree. I I, I think also employers should uh, not make the assumption that their employees are desperate to get back. I, I give yes. you a little side story. Uh, my wife, Kim, runs a Victorian tea rooms here in Northumberland, and um, she's got a brilliant chef. But yeah. a, 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 and her chef was just frightened about coming back and talking to people. And it's taken, three, it came maybe three, four weeks to gently ease her in. Uh, and, yeah. and now only now she's starting to maybe talk to customers she still does yeah. brilliant food don't get me wrong but right. you know if kim had assumed that um that that because she'd been off for a, a way over a year that she was desperate to get back then that could have hurt the relationship couldn't it absolutely mm, and right. each person is different in terms of how they have dealt with it and their level of fear and discomfort. So I think you're right. We have to tread lightly. And and then there are the folks who realistically aren't getting vaccinated. And mm. how do we deal with them? Yeah. It's, oh. it's yeah. You don't, you don't know who they are, by the way, you know, do you? <laughs> you can't say, let me see your certificate. Chris, right. it's, time, it's time for part two. Now, okay. On our UK version of The Apprentice, and I, I've interviewed some of the winners, by the way. Brilliant. Yeah. It, it always seems to me, though, that the candidates always fall down at the end through their having a lack of knowledge of their prospective employer. <laughs> now, that sounds stupid to me because, you know, I've always yeah. done all my research. But what do you think are the essentials a candidate should know about a company before an interview? Yeah, and I I think that's a great point, Malcolm. In my book, I have my longest chapters about interviewing, and I share some stories where we'll have clients who come to us and say, Malcolm did great in the interview. He's smart. He could do the job. He's a great fit, but we're not going to offer. And we'll be like, we're so confused. Why? And they'll say, he knew nothing about our company. He did no homework. Mm -hmm. So he's obviously shopping. He's not interested. So I would agree with you. One reason you do research on the company is to demonstrate your interest. And that's really important because these are people who work at the company, who love the company, and they want to hire people who also are really interested. So that's the first reason to do it. So I would tell you there are a couple things. One, if it's a publicly traded company, go read the annual report. If they have a website, scour the website. You can read about their values. You can read about their products and their offerings and all those type things. If they have an actual product that's sold in a store, go look at the product on the shelf and look at their competitors and kind of get a sense of who they are, who their consumer is, who the competitors are, and map out in your head what's going on in the category, what the opportunity areas might be, what the risks might be for them. Now, I will also tell you in the interview, I don't know that you really want to talk about them specifically because they may feel like you're taking pot shots at them if you talk about their brands, but I think you want to talk about the category specifically and say like it might be the vitamin mineral supplement category that they're in. And you can talk about how 
health and wellness is so important now coming out of COVID. And people mm -hmm. want to be proactive about their health. And with that, you know, what are you guys doing to show that you're going to help people fight the next virus? What are the, you know, what are the things that you're doing to tell consumers that your brand is top quality, that here are the things that they can do to build up their immunities? You know, that type question is very fair versus dinging them for something they're not doing. Mm -hmm. So those are the type things. The other thing that I do think is very fair is to ask them about the culture there. Say, you know, culture is very important. And I, you know, really love working in collaborative, empowering, action-oriented cultures. Can you describe to me why you love working there and what the culture's like? Because yeah. they want people who fit well. So those are kind of my thoughts, Malcolm. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What yeah. am, did I miss anything? Uh, well, uh, no, uh, brilliant. Um, and, and I think people should also learn what culture is, by the way. <laughs> in, in this particular case, it's nothing to do with the arts and literature. True. It's, it's about what the business, it's, it's ethos, it's vision, it's values. Uh, and my other yeah. little tip that I, I'm, I don't know whether it's the same in the USA as it is in the U UK, but larger corporates often have... Um, two websites. One is the front facing website and the other is the corporate website where, you know, they, they steer the press people to, or the investors to, and you can uh, learn so much about by finding the corporate website uh, about that business that you can't see from the front facing, should we, uh, website. You got say. it. Ah, see, I, I hadn't thought about that, but that's a great one. Investors. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I tell candidates is that there are a group of questions that I tell them never to ask until you get an offer. And those are mm. questions like, what are your typical hours? What in the U.S. it would be your, is your 401k match? You know, talk to me about your insurance, you know, things that really are not relevant until you get the offer. Yeah. Don't gotcha. ask those early on because they are not selling you. And I believe when you're, you know, asking questions or sharing stuff about the company that you've learned, those are still selling you. They're showing you've done your homework. You're sincerely interested. These other ones, I call them whiffums, what's in it for me. Those are ones that come out when you get the offer, but should mm. never be touched until you have the offer. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Now for part three. I, I like to think that I'm a self-starter and I've had to do that all my life. No legs up from anyone, but more likely a few legs cut away from me at many of the times. I see that all too often that people lowering their aspirations. I mean, this is about igniting your career. How do you help them overcome that uh, to achieve the position they rightly deserve? Yeah. And I think, Malcolm, the way to do that, again, if you go to my interview chapter, is to do your homework and to be able to articulate really clearly what your strengths are and how they've allowed you to deliver success. So it might be leadership, it might be strategic, it might be project management, but under each of those, you want examples. And I tell people to put it into a star format situation, thinking, action, result, a really succinct story that brings it to life so people remember it. And when you do that and you can demonstrate all these different skills, then what you can do is bridge it to different industries. I'm a superior leader and here are two examples of where that leadership has have allowed me to deliver success. And that's why even though your industry is a little bit different, that experience would still be leverageable in your industry. And so if you do your homework and know yourself well enough, have your stories, you know, really written down and able to bring to life well, you can translate it for them. But you've got to do homework on yourself. Yeah. Because if you don't invest, then then they won't see the match. Yeah. Can you can you just repeat that star format again, please? Yeah. So it's situation thinking, action, result. And, and I'll give you a quick example. Yeah, please. So when I was at Kraft Junior Marketer, um, I, was, I had to get a new product to market really quickly because competition was coming in and was in a meeting and the R&D guy was throwing up roadblocks every which way. So 
I didn't know what was going on. And so the thinking was, there's something weird going on here. And so I went and talked to people who had worked with him in the past. And what they told me was, he was so tired of what he called brand babies, people like me coming in with no experience, telling him what to do and not valuing his 30 years of experience. Mm -hmm. So the aha for me was, it's exactly what I was doing. And, and so I needed to change the paradigm. So the action I took is I called him up and said, Joe, can I buy you coffee? Let's sit down and talk. I need your help. And so we sat down and had coffee. And I said, look, you have so much knowledge. And I can't do this without you. Can you share with me what I should be doing? You know, what have marketers done wrong in the past? Help me figure this out because we got to get to market and this is why. And we spent two hours down having coffee, hashing everything over. And the result was he shifted from my biggest adversary to my biggest champion. Um, and so that example, they may not remember mm. that I is a strong influencer, but they're going to remember she's the one who won over that, that R&D guy. So just that really quick story cements it for them. So situation, thinking, action result. I like it. I like that. You're a star. Yeah. You're a star. <laughs> oh, uh, employees need to know where their employee employers need to know where their employees are thinking. They need to know how to handle disengagement and how to encourage people to, as Chris Holmes says, ignite their career. Thanks for coming back. Uh, and we have eventually met in St. Louis. And thanks for another yes. great interview, Chris. Thank you, Malcolm. And again, people can get my book or we also offer services such as coaching, resume writing, interview prep, negotiation at igniteyourcareerbook.com. And we'd love to assist you in your journey. Excellent. We'll just do that URL again and igniteyourcareerbook.com. And just remind, obviously, viewers, you can see the URL on the screen behind me. But for listeners uh, just joining us from our new channels, then uh, Ignite Your Book, <laughs> IgniteYourCareerBook.com, IgniteYourCareerBook.com. And also, Chris's website is O'ConnellGroup.com. Now, there's no apostrophe in O'Connell, as you would expect if you went to Ireland. It's O C O double N. C O double N E double L group.com, O'Connell group.com. And Malcolm, one other thing that I forgot to mention is for the celebration for our one year anniversary, for this week only, we're offering a 99 cent Kindle version of the oh. book on Amazon. So if anybody wants to get it and try it, the Kindle version actually reads beautifully. At first, I didn't think it would be functional. It's great. So for mm. 99 cents, you can get the book, you will have it forever, and you can use it as a resource. Yeah, but don't forget, I've got lots of rich viewers and listeners. So get them both. <laughs> the book get and them the seriously. Kid. Yes, True. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. Lovely to have met you in St. Louis. Thanks, Malcolm.